normal all the time in every single picture, silly. So do you remember what number is Pentecost? Brooklyn. 50, good, okay, and what does it stand for? First fruits, right? First fruits. Okay. I'm going to read something to you guys that's really incredible. It is chapter 39 from the book of Enoch. And, uh, you know, it's the first book of Enoch, which, so just until you stop freaking out, okay, because the thing is, is you need to do your research. There were four copies of the actual book of Enoch found in the Dead Sea Scrolls in cave number four, okay? And the Ethiopian copy matches up with it, even though it's pieces. Don't get me wrong, it is pieces, but it, it is... It was found, and so people need to stop having such a closed mind. And if you don't even have discernment, how could you even read anything without discernment? You have to have your discernment and compare it to the Bible. And if it agrees and it doesn't con go against what the Bible says, why wouldn't it be helpful? And the book of Enoch actually helps us through Genesis 3.15 and Genesis 6 to understand a lot more about what was taking place back then. Since we're right in the days of Lot right now and the days of uh, Noah and Saddam. Okay, so but listen, chapter 39. And it shall come to pass in those days that elect and holy children will descend from the high heaven... And their offspring will become one with the children of men. I saw that was interesting. And in those days, Enoch received books of indignation and wrath and books of turmoil and confusion. So he was receiving more than one book, quite a few. And I'm sure Noah had this, uh, these books on the boat, you know. Ow, Tristan, yikes. So, uh, but what I wanted to go to out of here, you guys, and this is just me. Um, actually, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. Pardon me. The leader, the leader of the watchers was Simjaza. Okay. 200 angels made the descent to earth at Mount Hermon. 200 angels were divided into groups of 10, each under the leadership of of chieftain or captain and they defiled themselves with women producing children their children were giants of 3,000 L's tall which some sources say is approximately 3,420 meters in height which is 11,250 feet tall that's over two miles tall can you even imagine you guys <laughs> My goodness, okay. So uh, what I wanted to go to, though, <clears throat> to read about was, well, chapter 71, and it came to pass after this that my spirit was translated, carried off. The word would be harpazo. As it ascended into heaven, I saw the sons of the holy angels of God. They were walking on flames of fire. Their garments were white and their faces shone like snow. And I saw two rivers of fire and the light of the fire shone like hyacinth. And I fell on my face before the Lord of the spirits, the Lord of spirits. And the angel Michael one of the archangels seized me by my right hand and lifted me up and led me out into all the secrets and he showed me all the secrets of righteousness. Now I know that in the book of uh, that Solomon says in Ecclesiastes, I think it's that book, Tristan really wants to fight and play right now. Um, he actually talks about in Ecclesiastes 1.9, that there's nothing new under the sun. What shall be done before will be done again. But what I was thinking about, it is the one that says it is 
the glory of God to conceal a thing, right? And then it talks about kings searching out the matter to reveal the matter. But when you look in the Bible, this is it. When you look in the Bible in the Strong's Concordance, it says it's the glory of God, number 430, which is plural, gods. Okay, they're the ones that want to hide everything and turn everything upside down. Not Jesus, not our God, Father in heaven, El. No, he's not the one that's trying to hide all this stuff and conceal things from us down here. He wants us to know the truth. Okay, so I just know if you check on eSword, you'll see that a lot of people will say that it is the glory of God to conceal the thing and the honor of men to search the matters out. And that is the truth, don't get me wrong, but the ones that were really trying to hide things from us are Elohim, magistrates, angels, number 433 in the Strong's Concordance, plural, angels. Fallen angels, little G's, okay? So just wanted to understand, but I, <sighs> this might be it right here. Okay, here it is, I did find it, and this is what I wanted to read to you about, okay? This is important. The Book of Astronomy and Calendar. Okay, the full, the full description of the calendar and its application and prophecy are discussed in this section. The calendar of Enoch's and Daniel's prophecy. Okay, the book of the courses of the luminaries of heaven. The relations of each according to their name, origin, and months. Dominion and seasons, which Uriel, the holy angel who is with me, who is their guide, showed me. And he sh showed me all their laws and regulations exactly as they are and how it is with each of the years of the world and to eternity until the new creation is accomplished, which endures until eternity. And this is the first law of the luminaries. The luminary, the sun, has its rising in the eastern doors of heaven and its setting in the western doors of heaven. And I saw six doors in which the sun rises, and six doors in which the sun sets. And the moon rises and sets in these doors, and the leaders of the stars and those whom they lead, six in the east and six in the west, and all following each other in accurately corresponding order. There were also many windows into the right and to the left of these doors. It's funny. I just did a video, but I erased it. And it's about, I was talking about the doors that God will open up for each and every single one of you. I just started to record without praying in. But I had just been doing a video and I had to actually free up some storage on my um, tablet here because it cut me off. But I was... Um, talking about how I will wake up and I will sit and say, my goodness, my goodness, what can I do for you, Lord? What can I do? Let me do your will. Let me do your will. And I think about it so hard and so much, you know, and um, that's all I want to do. And of course, in the Bible, it does say that put Jesus first and all other things will be added on to you. The kingdom of heaven will be added on to you. Just put him first, right? And so I was talking about how doors, because I saw somebody else and, and earlier they encouraged me because, you know, our God, our God is long, long suffering and patient. Okay, so it's okay to not always know what's going to happen. You know, just trust in him, trust in Jesus and the doors will open. They always do and at the right time. Okay, I'm very impatient. I'm somebody who has patience. He's been working with me for a very long time about this issue, though, so I've learned to slow down and just have patience. But I'm going to talk to you guys about this because it's very important because everybody is off on the calendar. Every single person is off. The um, Jews and Israel are off on the calendar. We are off on the calendar as well. And Satan, we know that we know it says it in the Bible that he will look to change the seasons and times. Okay, so I'm going to go through this real quickly. Uh, and the first door, which I'm sorry, we we're talking about the sun and how the sun 
has its rising in the eastern doors of heaven and its setting in the western doors of heaven. And I saw, and just real quick anyways, uh, Father God, I pray in real quick. I'm sending blessings to you in heaven and I would ask that you would please saturate the airspace and the atmosphere all the way surrounding this building and any kind of uh, thing, any kind of negative or darkness that's trying to come against this, I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ. Every scheme, plot, gin, and snare, every contract, attempt, counteroffensive weaponry, blueprint, attack strategy, sabotage, and slander, dark forces, the light of the enemy, satanic agents, fallen angels, unclean spirits, puppets, and agents of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is destroyed at the root of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, bound up, cast back to the dry places, and to be bound there. Uh, and not return in Jesus name I pray amen and I also pray God father in heaven that you would hedge in all believers at their homes right now and surround their airspace and atmosphere as well with holy warring angels that are from the kingdom of heaven and that are good and uh, we are we have a serious battle serious spiritual battle spiritual warfare is what it's all about guys there is no warring against flesh and blood According to Ephesians 6, take and put on the whole armor of God each and every single morning when you wake up, okay? Stand therefore having your loins girt about with the truth and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Putting on that helmet of salvation and take that sword and the breastplate of righteousness on, okay? And that sword, that sword in the spirit, the S, the word, the S in the word, sword, S, word. The sword is the word minus the S, right? And then take it and just chop and dot and you can take it and you can chop off anybody's heads that's coming at you and trying to do any kind of power, principality. Um, they all have to bow. And so usually they just flee. They, they bust a move and run because that's all they do is pretty much fly around in the first heavens and second heavens they're about to be banished out of the second heavens down to the earth the woe to the inhabitants of the earth when that happens Whew. hallelujah jesus amen all right so i'm going to get back to this because i just want to discuss with you guys about this this is something i've read through quite a few times um not always understanding it but everything comes when you hear Understanding comes by hearing it, and that's exactly what it says in the Bible, too. So to increase your faith, um, that's the thing, is to read the Bible. Just keep on reading it and ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand it. So, okay, so we have the, it says, And I saw six doors in which the sun rises and six doors in which the sun sets, and the moon rises and sets in these doors. And the leaders of the stars and those whom they lead six in the east and six in the west and all following each other in accurately corresponding order there were also many windows to the right and left of those of these doors and first there goes out the great luminary named the sun and his sphere orbit disc is like the sphere orbit disc of heaven and he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire Verse 5, the chariot on which he ascends, the wind drives, and the sun goes down from heaven and returns through the north in order to reach the east, and is so guided that he comes to the appropriate door and shines in the face of heaven. In this way, he rises in the first month in the great door, which is the fourth, and in the fourth door from which the sun rises is the first month, are twelve windows from which proceed a flame when they are opened in their season. So another thing that the Holy Spirit just said to me is this. We are in 3D, okay? Up in the heavens, it's actually, I, would, I just heard 4D, 5D. It's more like 5D, five-dimensional. The clock up in the heavens that the Lord has up there is not in 3D. Okay, so that's, I remember hearing that from Jesus Saves, and that is something that's really incredible. So that's another thing to take into consideration. Okay, when the sun rises in heaven, <clears throat> I'm sorry, 
and in the fourth door from which the sun rises is the first month are twelve windows from which proceed a flame when they are opened in their season. When the sun rises in heaven, he comes out through the fourth door, thirty mornings in succession, and sets accurately in the fourth door in the west of heaven. And during this period, the day becomes daily longer and nights grow shorter to the thirtieth morning. On that day, the day is longer than the night by a ninth part, and the day amounts exactly to ten parts, and the night to eight parts. And the sun rises from the fourth door and sets in the fourth and returns to the fifth door of the east thirty mornings and rises from it and sets in the fifth door. And then the day becomes longer by two parts and amounts to eleven parts. And the night becomes shorter and amounts to seven parts. That's a seven eleven. And it returns to the east and enters into the sixth door and rises and sets in the sixth door one and thirty mornings on account of its sign. Okay? On that day, the day becomes longer than the night, and the day becomes double at night, and the day becomes twelve parts, and the night is shortened and becomes six parts. And the sun mounts up to take and the sun mounts up to make the day shorter and the night longer, and the sun returns to the east and enters into the sixth door and rises from its from it and sets thirty mornings. And when thirty mornings are accomplished, the day decreases by exactly one part and becomes eleven parts, and the night seven. You guys I know. Just listen, okay, just listen, because it is Something I'm not totally even getting myself, but I do read this because it is very much about God's calendar. And it's very important that we do understand right now what's going on. Because <laughs> what time we are in is important, and I believe Enoch's calendar is the answer. It's 364 days. Okay. And when the 30 mornings are accomplished... The day become, decreases by exactly one part and becomes 11 parts and the night seven. Wow. And the sun goes out from the six, from that six door in the west and goes to the east and rises in the fifth door for 30 mornings and sets in the west again in the fifth western door. These are all up in the heavens. This is fascinating to me. I can't wait to see it. On that day, the day decreases by two parts and amounts to ten parts and the night to eight parts. And the sun goes out from the fifth door and sets in the fifth door of the west and rises in the, fifth, the fourth door for one and thirty mornings on account of its sign and sets in the west. On that day, the day becomes equal with the night in length. And the night amounts to nine parts, and the day to nine parts. And the sun rises from the door and sets in the west, and returns to the east, and rises thirty mornings in the third door, and sets in the west in the third door. And on that day, the night becomes longer than the day, and night becomes longer than night, and day is shorter than day, until the thirtieth morning. And the night amounts exactly to ten parts and the day to eight parts. And the sun rises from that third door and sets in the third door in the west and returns to the east. And for thirty mornings rises in the second door in the east. And in like manner sets in the second door in the west of heaven. And on that day the night amounts to eleven parts and the day to seven parts. There we go with that 7 again. Wow. And the sun rises on that day from the second door and sets in the west on the second door and returns to the east into the first door for one and thirty mornings. So 31 days. And sets in the first door in the west of heaven. And on that day, the night becomes longer and amounts to the double of the day. And the night amounts exactly to 12 parts and the day to six. Okay, if the night is 12 parts 
and the day is six parts, the entire 24-hour day is divided into 18 sections of 80 minutes each. That's the math. And the sun has traversed the divisions of his orbit and turns again on those divisions of his orbit and enters the door 30 mornings and sets also in the west opposite to it. And on that night has the night decreased in length by a ninth, ninth part. And the night has become 11 parts and the day 7 parts. So we have a bunch of a 9, 11 and a 7, 11 again. He loves his numbers. <laughs> okay, she goes out for seven days and turns about and returns again through the door where the sun rises and all her light is full. And she recedes from the sun and in eight days enters the sixth door from which the sun goes out. Okay, I just, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, you guys. I skipped a page. I'm so sorry. It totally erased what I just said. And the sun has returned and entered into the second door in the east and returns on on those his divisions of his orbit for 30 mornings rising and setting and on that day the night decreases in length and the night amounts to 10 parts and the day to 8 and on that day the sun rises from that door and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises in the third door for one and 30 mornings and sets in the west of heaven so we have another 31 days on that day, the night decreases and amounts to nine parts, and the day to nine parts, and the night is equal to the day, and the year is exactly as to its day, 364. And the length of the day, and of the night, and the shortness of the day, and of the night arise through the course of the sun. These distinctions are separated, so it comes that its course becomes daily longer and its course nightly shorter. And this is the law and the course of the great luminary, which is named the sun, and his return as often as he returns 60 times and rises forever and ever. And what, I'm sorry, and that which rises is the great luminary and is so named according to its appearance, according as the Lord commanded. As he rises, so he sets and decreases not and rests not, but runs day and night, and his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon. But in regard to size, they are both equal. That's hilarious, because that's what I was telling Brooklyn the other day. I said the sun and the moon are exactly the same size. You cannot deny it. I have never, even before I came, became Christian, fully Christian, or let me just say a follower of Jesus, a follower of the way. I never thought it made any sense because the moon is too, I've seen the moon and the sun close together. And I mean, it's just crazy when you see them together and they're so close and they look exactly identical. So it's a bunch of mumbo jumbo, what they say scientifically about everything. I don't believe any of it. <laughs> Chapter 73. <clears throat> and after this, <clears throat> After this law, I saw another law dealing with the smaller luminary, which is named the moon. And her orbit is like the sphere orbit disk of heaven. And her chariot in which she rides is driven by the wind. And light is given to her in measurement. And her rising and setting change every month. And her days are like the days of the sun. And when her light is uniformly completely full it amounts to the seventh part of the light of the sun and thus she rises and her first phase is in the east comes out on the 30th morning and on that day she becomes visible and constitutes for you the first phase of the moon on the 30th day together with the sun in the door where the sun rises okay answers a lot of questions right there and the one half of her goes out by a seventh part, and her whole disk is empty without light, <clears throat> with the exception of one seventh part of it, and the fourteenth part of her light. 
I knew the sun was never reflecting and like doing that to the moon. I never thought that. I always thought that the moon was actually lit by itself by God. And when she receives one seventh part of the half of her light, her light amounts to one seventh part and the half thereof. And she sets with the sun. And when the sun rises, the moon rises with him and receives the half of one part of light. And in, the, in that night, in the beginning of her morning, in the beginning of the lunar day, the moon sets with the sun and is invisible that night with the 14 parts and the half of them, or I'm sorry, and the half of one of them. And she rises on that day with exactly a seventh part and comes out and recedes from the rising of the sun. And in her remaining days, she becomes bright in the remaining 13 parts. Okay, chapter 74. And I saw another course, a law for her, how according to that law, she performs her monthly revolution. And all these, Uriel, the holy angel, who is the leader of them all, showed to me and their positions, and I wrote down their positions as he showed them to me, and I wrote down their months as they were, and the appearance of their lights until 15 days were accomplished. In, the, in single seventh parts, she accomplishes all her light in the east, and in single seventh parts, accomplishes all her darkness in the west, and in certain months, she alters her settings, and in certain months, she pursues her own peculiar course. In two months, the moon sets with the sun. In those two middle doors, the third and the fourth, she goes out for seven days and turns about and returns again through the door where the sun rises and all her light is full. And she recedes from the sun and in eight days enters the sixth door from which the sun goes out. And when the sun goes out from the fourth door, she goes out seven days until she goes out from the fifth and turns back again in seven days into the fourth door and accomplishes all her light. And she recedes and enters into the first door in eight days. And she returns again in seven days into the fourth door from which the sun goes out. Thus, I saw their positions, how the moons, how the moons, plural, what? Okay, thus I saw their position, positions, how the moons rose and the sunset in those days. Because see, I have filmed two moons myself. And also when I was pregnant, like 10 years over, it was probably, sorry, 14 years ago, I had an open vision. I was driving my car. And I had to pull over because I had an open vision of the moon crumbling up and breaking and falling to the earth. And that was crazy because I thought I was really seeing that. And when you have an open vision, I mean, it just freaked me out. I pulled over. I was like, what in the world is happening? So what am I seeing, right? Um, but I have filmed two, two moons and... If you go to Rena Rhodes, R-H-O-D-E-S channel, you will see that I did film. There's only a couple of videos that are on that channel. But make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit all notifications, guys, because you will not receive the videos unless you hit tap on the, the subscribe button and then hit all under notifications. You hit the notification button and hit all because on my other channel, they turned everybody's off. And um, unfortunately, so just wanted to let you know that YouTube does do that. So if you could, it would be uh, appreciated. Then that way you can check out <clears throat> whenever I do put videos out. You can check it out if you'd like. I know I'm already going 29 minutes, guys. Something was just flying behind me. I saw it. It looks like a mosquito. <laughs> but anyways, um, I'm going to get to this. I want to finish it, okay? Listen. <clears throat> Thus I saw their positions, how, <clears throat> how the moons rose and the sun set in those days. And if five years are added together, the sun has an excess of 30 days and all the days which occur 
to it for one of those five years when they are full amount to 364 days and in excess of the sun and of the stars amounts to six days in five years six days every year come to 30 days and the moon falls behind the sun and the stars to number of 30 days and the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day to eternity but complete the years with perfect justice in 364 days in three years there are 1092 days and in five years there are 1820 days so that in eight years there are 2912 days okay so for the moon alone the days amount in three years to 1062 days and in five years she falls 50 days behind to the sum of 1770 there is five to be added 1062 days and in five years there are 1770 days so that the moon so for the moon the days six in eight years amount to 21,832 days for in eight years she falls behind to the amount of 80 days all of the days she falls behind in eight years are 80 and the year is accurately completed in conformity with their world stations and the stations of the sun which rise from the doors through which the sun rises and sets 30 days this is amazing okay chapter 75 and the leaders of the heads of the ten thousands who are in charge of the whole creation and over all the stars have also to do with the four days of the year which are not counted in the yearly calendar being not separated from their office according to the reckoning of the year and the, these render service on the four days which are not counted in the reckoning of the year and because of them men go wrong in them for those luminaries truly render service to the stations of the world okay one in the first door one in the third door of heaven one in the fourth door and one in the sixth door and the exactness of the year is accomplished through its separate 364 stations for the signs and the times and the years and the days the angel Uriel, Uriel showed to me whom the Lord of glory has set for ever over all the luminaries of heaven in heaven and in the world that they should rule on the face of heaven and be seen on the earth and be leaders for the day via the sun and the night via the moon and stars and all the ministering creatures which make their revolution in all the chariots of heaven in like manner twelve doors Uriel showed me open in the sphere which is the sun of the sun's chariot in heaven through which the rays of the sun break out and from them is warmth diff diffused over the earth when they are opened at their appointed seasons that's so cool and there are openings for the wind and the spirit of dew that when they are opened stand open in heaven at the ends of the earth as for the twelve doors in the heaven at the ends of the earth out of which go out the sun moon and stars and all the works of heaven in the east and in the west there are many windows open to the left and right of them. And one window is at its appointed season produces warmth, corresponding to the doors from which the stars come out as he has commanded them, and in which they are set, corresponding to their number. And I saw chariots in heaven running in the, running in the world above those doors in which the stars that never set. And one is larger than all the rest, and it is that that makes its course through the entire world okay i'm going to stop here and then pick up on chapter 76 the next time because there is more about the luminaries in the heavens and i think it's very important that we understand that part guys 
sisters and brothers. So I love you guys in Christ and it's getting later. So I'm going to give you a hug from me to you. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming so soon. He's coming so soon. And let me know if you guys have any prayers, please. Any prayer requests and I will pray for you. I love you guys all and be good. Amen. I hope you enjoy the little reading of Enoch. Enoch is amazing, and it's something that everybody should read. The Lord himself told me, okay? If you go back on, like, a couple of years ago, I did read through, but I never did understand this part, the calendar, um, at all. So I'm asking for understanding, and I'm just going to keep on reading it and reading it. And anybody have any ideas? or have any comments about what I just read, please drop them in the comments, okay? And have an awesome day. I will show you just how beautiful and clear the skies are. Look at how beautiful and green it is. It's amazing. It is amazing. I love you, Father in heaven. You are the potter and we are the clay, Elion. Yehovi, Yehova. Oh, I love you so much. You're the potter and we are the clay. And so I'm praying for all my sisters and brothers out there um, that you just keep them safe wherever they are at. And then in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Love you guys.